I am talking to you in front of the fireplace in the main living room of the Castilla Foundation. I am not speaking to you from a room of the 20th century. I am surrounded by objects and furnishings which would be more at home to a person from more ancient centuries or perhaps from oriental countries of the present time. The room is lit by candlelight. There are no chairs or tables, but colored mattresses, cushions. On the walls there are tapestries of faraway events and places. As I look out the window, I see lawns, fountains, a meditation house shrouded by pine trees, and behind it, a meditation garden. This is the home of the Castelia Foundation, a center for research on the scientific and religious implications of consciousness-expanding drugs. This is a serene and beautiful place inhabited by serene and serious-minded people who are dedicating their lives and their energies to expanding their consciousness and harmonizing with the energies inside and outside of their bodies. The situation here is not completely serene at the moment because this quiet island is under siege for the last few days, the last few weeks, the last few months. This peaceful surrounding has been surrounded by government agents, wiretappers, anxious and angry politicians. Why should this be? The reason for this siege of serenity is because I've gotten myself in trouble. I'm in trouble because I know too much. A few years ago, quite by accident, perhaps, I stumbled on the Philosopher's Stone. I had the veil of illusion pulled back and was confronted by the many levels of energy, the many realms of consciousness which are available to man. I opened the Pandora box of multiple reality. Now these are poetic metaphors for describing an ancient experience. I could just as well use more modern and scientific metaphors to describe how I got into trouble. I could say that by using psychedelic drugs, I became tuned in on the network of neurological signals and cellular wisdoms that radiate hundreds of millions per second within my body. In the last six years, I have taken the voyage out of my mind into my head, into my cells, over 300 times. Each time I have made this voyage, I have tried to communicate it to fellow voyagers and to my fellow men. Partly as the result of our experiences, at the present time, over a million Americans have had the experience of going beyond their mind 
into the eerie, shifting, pulsating world of energy systems within their own body. In addition to the million Americans who have taken psychedelic drugs such as LSD, there are hundreds of millions of other people who have heard this news. Hundreds of millions of people in this country, in South America and Europe, who have been disturbed, fascinated, confused, irritated by the rumors about psychedelic drugs, their promise, their challenge, their perils. What are psychedelic drugs? The first thing to be said is that there's no new arrival on the human historical scene. Sacred plants and vegetables have been used for thousands of years, back to the dawn of human history, by wise men, medicine men, prophets, to expand man's mind. Today, in our technological society, we have produced dozens of chemicals which perform the same function. LSD, mescaline, dimethyltryptamine, psilocybin, there's a long litany of psychedelic chemicals, all of which, interestingly enough, are based on organic or botanical chemicals. And the powerful drugs which we now have to expand human consciousness are not the end. Each few months, the biochemists come up with a new molecule which talks directly, eloquently and powerfully to the human nervous system, opens it up and changes it. What do these ancient plants and modern drugs do to the human mind? They expand consciousness. What is consciousness? Consciousness is energy which is received and decoded by a physiological structure. There are as many levels of consciousness available to the human being as there are structures, anatomical organs inside the body for decoding different sorts of energies. Specifically and statistically, there are hundreds of levels of consciousness whirling around inside your nervous system and your cellular systems, each one a universe unto itself with its own meaning, its own dialect, its own politics, its own ecstasies, its own terrors, its own concepts of union and disillusion. There are hundreds of universes of intelligent energy inside your body. For the beginning student in this new and bewildering science of consciousness expansion, it's useful, I think, to consider five broad levels of consciousness. And anyone who wishes to think about or learn about the psychedelic drugs must keep something like this five-point scale in mind. 
because each drug, each drug experience energizes and triggers off different levels of consciousness. The five levels of consciousness that I suggest you learn and eventually learn to use are sleep, symbolic consciousness, the consciousness of the senses directly energized, the consciousness of cell, and the consciousness of precellular energy, molecular or atomic in nature. Sleep, symbol, sense, cell, molecule. Today, we Americans live in a drug-happy culture. Today, I would say that 90% of Americans are addicted to or dependent on some drug which alters consciousness. Think of the millions upon millions of Americans who depend upon tranquilizers, pep pills, alcohol, nicotine to get them through the trials and joys of each day. Whereas in other centuries, men debated and fought over symbols, the cross or the crescent, or which version of the Bible you read. Today, our biggest industries and our most vicious political quarrels seem to be generated by which drug do you use in order to make sense of the politics of conscious expanding drugs or consciousness contracting drugs, you must understand how specific drugs trigger off different levels of awareness. All of you know what happens when you take a heavy dose of a narcotic or of alcohol, you fall into a stupor, you escape into sleep. All of you know what normal symbolic consciousness is. We think of ourselves as human beings with tangible organs such as ears and fingers and eyes and feet. Actually, the human body is a collection of trillions of cells. Each cell in your body is a network of communication and intelligent energy much more complicated than the city of New York. Each cell in your body is performing tasks of communication transportation, ingestion, elimination, defense, memory, and learning. Tasks which are millions or hundreds of millions of years old and which have not changed in many cycles of evolution. Within the nucleus of every cell in your body, is contained a chain of protein molecules which is called the DNA code. This is the blueprint of life. The DNA code is a biochemical electrical architect's office which designs and constructs every cell in your body and the overall patterning of your organs and tissues. Your DNA code 
was created by the codes of your mother and your father, you contain within every cell in your body a living chain of molecules which is literally the chain of life and which traces back in an unbroken sequence to the beginning of life on this planet some two billion years ago. If one link in this chain of life had been broken in over two billion years, you and I would not be here today. During psychedelic sessions with drugs such as peyote, mescaline, psilocybin, and LSD, consciousness can contact the evolutionary wisdom which resides inside yourselves, make connection with a living time machine which pulsates inside each cell. During the typical psychedelic drug session, the subject reports being tumbled through a compressed history of evolution. At one second, you lie pulsating as a single cell. In the next second, ancient memories of mammalian existence sweep over your consciousness. In the next second, a hundred file card memories of other human lives spin through your projector. In one instant, you are an old man, a young baby, a beautiful woman. Here is an eerie science fiction world impossible to describe in words. It's as though God has taken you by the hand and led you through the door of sleep, through the door of symbol, through the door of senses, into the heart of his workshop, relentless, timeless, tissue machinery, clicking, unfolding, changing, spinning out organic forms, constantly evolving. The most powerful of the psychedelic lenses presently available to us and the most powerful experience which has been described in human history is the fifth level of consciousness. The universe of pure energy, vibrations, pulsating rhythms, far older, far more powerful, far wiser than the cell are those energies, molecular and atomic, which lay at the far outskirts of human awareness. During any one second of an LSD session, consciousness can whirl through all five levels, sleep, symbol, sense, cell, and soul. A thousand microscopes, a thousand telescopes, a thousand blindfolds, a thousand symbols spinning through awareness at each instant. The LSD experience cannot be understood as anything but a philosophic confrontation. What is real in this spinning universe of realities, of varying space and time dimensions. 
And what is the effect of this rocket voyage through the nervous system and the cellular terrain? Terror, reverence, cosmic laughter, awe, ecstasy, but mainly confusion. The average American is no more equipped to confront and understand the energies which reside inside his body than a weak old baby is able to understand and use a computer. You are the weak old baby and the computer is your brain. At the present time, the human race finds itself at a paradoxical evolutionary crossroad. There now exists a plentitude of molecules, psychedelic drugs and chemicals, which can dramatically accelerate and expand consciousness. But where is the wisdom and the technical know-how to understand and control these potentialities? My first psychedelic experience occurred in Mexico in 1960. At that time, I was a whiskey-drinking, cigarette-smoking, symbol-addicted psychologist. I ate seven of the sacred mushrooms of Mexico and within a half hour was spun into a psychological laboratory two billion years old which laughed at my pretensions at predictive knowledge. Since that time, six years ago, I have done almost nothing but attempt to understand and communicate this experience. Shortly thereafter, I returned to Harvard University and gave psychedelic drugs to some 300 professors, graduate students, writers, and philosophers. 75% of these people reported the most revelatory and educational experience of their lives. We gave these drugs to 36 prisoners who looked at the cops and robbers game through the brutal microscope of expanded consciousness and laughed and gave up crime. We gave these drugs to over 200 professional religious people, two-thirds of whom reported the deepest religious experience of their lives. But each single case of a person taking LSD, however positive, generated a hundred rumors, for the most part negative. Our society, materialistic, technological, symbol addicted, is made uneasy by the thought of people turning inward. Drugs, the terror word of the 20th century. But let's face this issue of drugs 
bluntly and factually, the embarrassing truth is that consciousness is a chemical phenomenon. Everything that you have ever experienced, you experienced because of a chemical reaction in your nervous system. Memory is a chemical process. Learning is a chemical process. Stupidity is a chemical process. Stupor is a chemical process. Normal awareness is a chemical process. The language of your body is the language of molecules. The retina of your eye, the delicate membrane of your ear, your nerve cells, your tissue cells do not speak English, nor Latin, nor French. They are designed, they have been designed by a two billion year process of trial and error to receive, decode, and send out a language which is chemical. Perhaps the mystery and the fear itself which surrounds the word drugs is due to the fact that he who deals with symbols deals with changing and structures. But he who deals with chemicals tampers with the basic power and energy of life. Thus come the rumors of danger. Psychedelic drugs, they threaten the solidity and durability of our stereotypes. But that's all they endanger. The facts of the matter are the psychedelic drugs, such as marijuana, peyote, and LSD, are not addictive. It's the blindfolds and the escape drugs that are addictive. Neither do these drugs incite to crime, heroin, and alcohol are the triggers to antisocial behavior. The man with a microscope in his eye may be confused. He may stumble. He may cry out. In ecstasy or alarm, but he's got too much going on inside of him to be concerned with pushing other people around. There has never been a case of a marijuana smoker or an LSD taker who has put a whiskey drinker in jail. These days, there is an avalanche of publicity about the effects of marijuana and LSD. My advice is don't listen to any of the propaganda, whether it's positive or negative. Don't believe what you read in the papers. And don't listen to general statements. 
in this time of hysteria and crisis, you must do what men have always done in such times.